Coming up on Tech Thing, Android photography tips that work on iPhones too. Sure, SE215 earbud, we got a review. Blocking book face photos you don't want to see, and some pliers and cutters we just can't get enough of. It's all coming up on Tech Thing. Thank you, patrons. Without your support via patreon.com slash tech thing, we wouldn't be able to make the show for you each and every week. Join the crew that makes tech thing possible at patreon.com slash tech thing. Thanks. I'm Shannon Morse. And I'm Patty Dorton. And this is Tech Thing, where we have something useful in every single show. Yes. Yes, we do. <laughs> We're going to take a virtual trip to the library today. Are we? Well, we'll talk about that later in the show. That sounds fun. Turns out there's yet another random thing that now shows up in Google search mm -hmm. because Google is slowly indexing everything on the planet. <laughs> Every little thing. So what have you been up to lately? I'm drilling holes in my house. Oh, really? Well, it turns out mm -hmm. when you are testing mesh networking equipment and you decide to relocate the primary mesh devices to the center of your house and you drag a cable through your house because expedient, um, you create a lot of issues oh. for the family. Also, the fact that I needed to run another cable so I could still run all of the stuff that's normally connected yeah. to the switch to the, the hub or the router in the closet. So those mesh networking things I said to be here today, they'll be here next week, <laughs> but I'll still be married. <laughs> Which is good, because nothing complicates. I'm tired of waiting, Patrick. I'm uh, ready for this mesh networking awesomeness. There's so much mesh networking. <laughs> All the mesh. Let us see the things. I will. OK. Next week. I'm holding you to it, man. It, as well you should. It's, it, it, it's <laughs> we'll talk about it next week. OK, cool. Anthony reached out to askatechthing.com. Well, I think it was askatechthing.com. In any case, Anthony wrote, hi, Shannon. I know you're into professional photography and was wondering, could you give some advice on the best settings or Android apps to use for smartphone photography? I read that we should use 4x3 instead of the 16x9 aspect ratio for images, but what's your advice on this and any other options? Any tips would be welcome. I'm using the HTC 10. Thanks, Anthony. Okay, so first off, your phone comes with some really awesome camera specs. So I think that you're good there. Yeah. Uh, you have a 12 megapixel, it's a 1 by 2.3 inch sensor with 1.55 micrometer pixels in size. It packs an f1.8 aperture, Not optical image stabilization. Yeah, and the stabilization is great for that. It also supports, and get this, raw photography, 4K video, 720p, 120fps slow motion video, and he has a 5 megapixel front camera with the same thing, OIS and f1.8 aperture. Hmm. The pixels are a little bit smaller in this point. It's, it's 1.34 micrometer pixels in size density. So the built-in camera app allows you to take different photos in 4x3 or 16x9. Now if the HTC is anything like my Pixel XL, taking photos in 4.3 or 4x3 allows me to take full advantage of the 12 megapixels. Mm -hmm. But when I switch to the larger ratio of 16x9, by, by does it you like know, letterbox? You know it what just happens? cuts off the... Basically, yeah, it drops down to 8.3 megapixels. Oh, so I lose pixels. some of those megapixels when I go to that 16 by 9 aspect ratio, which is why people recommend 4 by 3, even though I personally mm -hmm. think that 16 by 9 is more pleasing to the eye aesthetically. I really, really like 16 by 9. Do that afterwards. Yeah, do edit, that afterwards. Edit, you edit. can always crop your picture <laughs> afterwards. So the nice thing about your HTC 10 is it comes with this awesome pro mode, which means that you can take photos in RAW, which has tons and tons of different advantages. That's why a lot of people use photography, like really right. big full frame It's essentially uncompressed yeah, photos. Yeah, basically. All the way, of the data the camera can capture. I was, I was thinking <laughs> about a way to describe RAW photos while I was driving over to work today without Googling it. And I was like, picture, when, when you're in the kitchen and you're cooking a meal on the stove, you're, you're changing the ingredients as you go. You're cooking them mm. to make them taste good, make the quality better. Those are raw pictures. Afterwards, when you put salt on them, just to try to make it taste better afterwards, that's like the JPEGs. So you're not changing the actual data, you're just trying to put a filter on top of the data right. that you're set with with well, JPEGs. Well, it's the raw ingredients versus something that's been exactly. processed. Exactly. Hence why yeah. it's called raw. Raw. So <laughs> HTC 10, it's awesome that it has raw. Plus, you can also control ISO. Yes. You can control white balance yes. with the pro mode, shutter speed, So many things I can screw up. I'm not going to go into <laughs> a ton of detail on those since I d already did a segment on those previously. And that would be a whole segment in itself again. It was. <laughs> yeah, it was really long-simming. Plus, you could, uh, you, you could actually 
actually add specific settings depending on mm -hmm. the environment that you're shooting in. So me telling you exactly right. which settings would work for you might not necessarily work for your environment. And as our friend Robert Heron likes to say, you know, if you just got the camera, just wipe everything back to the factory settings because who knows what delete expletive, delete expletive did your delete expletive settings <laughs> because they didn't delete expletive know what they were doing. Oh, he's so funny. Yeah, that's pretty much <laughs> what he said, um, minus the naughty oh, bits. Man. But. So there's a whole bunch of different applications that you can actually use with Android. Uh, the first one I'll recommend is called VSCO it's or Visco. Awesome. Yeah, both of us have used it previously. I'm currently using it. It's very popular for Instagrammers especially because it offers a wide range of settings that you can play around with to edit your photography. So it also has a built-in social network of sorts so you can find and follow other photographers from around the world. If you're into that kind of thing, personally, I don't need another social network so I just don't use that part. Uh, it does look like RAW is currently not available in Android, though they have added support in iOS devices in a recent update. So anybody out there with iOS, you can now use RAW support in Visco, which is great. So a lot of people really recommend Visco. I know Patrick has used it as well a ton. Yeah, I was actually about to pull it up on my phone, but of course my phone is logged into the wrong network <laughs> and Reflector won't show up. But it's, it's, it is, it is, I've used a half dozen different professional or prosumer yeah. or advanced applications and uh, VSCO, Visco is Visco's one of the only really ones good. that's not insanely frustrating. Now, if you do want to focus on raw photography, which I highly suggest that mm -hmm. you do, another one that you can check out is called Snapseed. I don't have this installed on my newest phone, as you can see, because I had to replace my Pixel XL yet again. But this one includes lots and lots of fine tuning in applications for editing photos, including a healing brush, HDR settings, a glamour glow, which basically brightens up your skin in don't a photo. Use that. <laughs> well, you can if you feel like it's like 1980 again. White balance, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. You can also undo in the redo edits in case you screw up, which is really useful. Control Z. Exporting is also built in so that you can send a finished photo to your favorite sharing app, like Instagram, for example. So it has a lot of those settings built in that uh, you would probably use if you are editing raw photos. And the last application that I want to recommend is Lightroom, which is my personal favorite. <laughs> I love using Lightroom for like everything. Not last because she doesn't want you to use it, but last because it is the end all and be all of <laughs> yeah, pretty much it is. <laughs> well, this do you, one is do hardcore. You, do you edit with it or do you capture with it and edit with I it? I edit with it. Okay. I don't capture in, in the app at all. Okay. I don't edit in, or I don't capture in any editing apps mm -hmm. uh, just because I prefer to use the default photography application that's, mm -hmm. that comes built into my camera. I figure that's probably best, but you totally can if you want to. I just, I think with the HTC 10, given that you have the pro options in your default camera app, you probably don't have to change to an additional one. <laughs> But these are all just specifically for editing those photos after Aftermath. So this is the link to download Adobe Photoshop Lightroom. Uh, this one is also free as opposed to their desktop version. This one also supports RAW. It also has all those built-in editing features, like you have selective editing for different specific areas of your picture. You have HDR. You can change the white balance, add tonal curves to change the color settings. And best yet, and this is personally why I use it a lot, you can sync across multiple devices if you also use Lightroom on those other devices. So if you do pay for Lightroom on the desktop, you can sync your edits from your phone oh, wow. to the desktop, which is so cool because then I can do the same exact edits on Lightroom on my desktop. Or have That's them awesome. already done for you? Yeah, or yeah, it's going to sync oh, all wow. your edits, which is so cool. Does I just love it. Does it sync all the photos too? Uh, I'll have to check on that. Okay. <laughs> I'll have to check. But um, if you have already bought the Lightroom software, I believe right. sometimes you can get a sale for it for like a hundred bucks. It is very expensive software, but if you are f into photography, it's kind of worth it. It's a pretty amazing tool. Yeah. All right. But there is no point in editing a photo if it's shoddy to begin with. So some beginner photography tips, and Patrick will be our demonstrator. First off, hold your phone up to your chest for yeah. support or to your eyeballs for support. Uh, try to use a tripod if possible. That way you're not going to end up with janky yeah. photos when you're trying to take something that's a still shot, especially if you have an action picture. The brighter it is outside, the less critical this is. But as soon as yeah. you're like, I'm going to get a picture of Toby at the birthday party and there's going to be one <laughs> candle in It'll a happen. giant dark room. Like if you hold the picture like this, or the camera <laughs> like this, right? But if you, you pull your elbows in and hold the camera, mm -hmm. it's a much more stable much, platform. Much more steady. Or better yet, 
get down on a solid surface yeah. or better yet like when I'm doing of night course, photography don't, don't stick your photos in front of the lens like Patrick was doing just now well you know <laughs> the uh, but also like if there's you know if there's a if the top of a car a telephone pole a light yeah. the bar a bar stool a wall anything you can lean the camera up against to minimize the motion is going to make your life so much easier yes when you're photographing in a dim or dark situation. Totally, uh, and also don't use the flash, just add brightness in the raw edit, right. or you could also have a friend turn on their flashlight from some other angle, that way you don't blow out any faces if you're taking pictures like that, because the flashes Bad. on <laughs> camera Better. phones are not good at all, they're terrible, yeah. and they make everything look completely washed out. Line up your horizon for a straight shot, especially if you're taking pictures of something like the ocean or something mm -hmm. like that. That way you d it doesn't look kind of janky and tilted to the side. I tend to hold my phone kind of like this, so I have it turned on so I can see the exact, uh, uh, the, the exact yeah. horizontal line that it should be at so that it doesn't end up tilted, which is so annoying. Of course, you can usually adjust that in settings afterwards. Boom. Why capture something you know you're going to have to fix later if yeah. you can just shoot it horizontally? Just the first shoot time. it straight. Don't digital use, zoom. I yeah. have a 32,000x digital zoom in Don't my camera. Don't use the digital zoom. It's <laughs> terrible. It's terrible. It's going to look pixelated. Instead, just stick right. with walking closer to your subject if you can. I know if you're a zoo and you're at a zoo and you're trying to take a picture of like a lion. Don't climb over the cage and try to get a close-up shot. You can use the zoom in that case, but if you're walking towards a person, much better option. Mm -hmm. Always shoot in the highest settings that you can allow yourself, especially if you want to shoot like 4K video or right. something like that. You won't regret it in the future. But of course, it kind of is in relation to your storage needs. So if you have a 32 gig phone, you might want to do 1080p instead of 4K. And then play with the in-app settings because every single person is going to have a favorite and photography is an art. Yes. So you've got pro settings, so I don't really think that you have, you need to download an alternative app to take photos, but you can definitely play with those settings and find the artistic style that you really, really want because it's really up to you. Try all of the applications because mm -hmm. you might find one that you you know just buries the one that came with the phone just in case, and most of them are free to try out. That's true. And if you can avoid shooting with a lot of really weird settings or filters, I mean, one of the things that's nice is there's you know there's no longer like like Instagram you know it saves an unscrewed up version of the picture yeah. and you know your really cool stylized version of the picture. Notice one of those I was making a judgment call on, <laughs> but, but you laugh right. But some of the things that but look really true. cool to you now. <laughs> may not look really cool in six months yeah. or a year or five years when you're like, that was the only picture we had of Which Toby. is why RAW is awesome and then saving all those pictures into Lightroom because yeah. you can always go back to the original photo and then edit it a different way. Uh, you might also want to check out lens editions once you get used to the settings in your application. For example, Photo Jojo. They have a whole bunch of really cool lenses that are magnetic, and they are mostly marketed towards <laughs> iOS users, but Photo you can Jojo also can use them Photo be really with expensive Android. really quickly. <laughs> yes, they, they are. So I would highly suggest getting used to your own settings before you end up buying lenses. I haven't bought any lenses in a very long time for my phone because I don't need them. But you might find that you are really into like macro shots, so you might want to look into yeah. that in the future. I mean really expensive in the sense that they just have giant piles yeah. of awesome and cool stuff. The, the lens is also, you know, you might think like it's a telephoto lens. It's gonna get me like five times closer. Yeah. We've talked about sort of the difference in, in the lens length versus what you actually see on mm -hmm. the camera. Yeah. Like the macro lenses and some of the wide angle lenses do a pretty good job on cell phones. Most of the telephone telephoto ones, unless they're actually adapting a legit giant telephoto lens to your phone, are mm -hmm. gonna be kind of disappointing. Although they, yeah. may, they may double, sort of have the distance. You might have distance. good luck. Yeah, yeah. It, it really just depends on whichever lens you buy. Uh, I would love to see some of your work. So of course, if you do have a public facing Instagram, I would love to check it out. I love following other photography enthusiasts, especially cell phone ones, because hey, why not? Mine is <laughs> at snubs as well, if you wanna follow me on Instagram, shameless plug. So hit me up, and if anyone out there has any other recommendations for Anthony, let us know in the comments below so that they are publicly available, or you can tweet at TechThing, and we would love to retweet you with some awesome, awesome recommendations. Awesome. I said awesome. Awesome. Awesome recommendations. That's an awesome laptop. <laughs> <laughs>
I had a chance to check out Shure's $99 entry-level in-ear monitor. We have a bunch of people out there who are kind of curious whether or not there's something better than the one Moors as I drop it and attempt to break it, which is very, very unlikely. <laughs> um, you wouldn't know this was the least expensive uh, in-ear monitor that Shure makes holding it in your hand. The build quality is fantastic. It's essentially the same kind of enclosure they, they, they use on their $535 SE in-ear. Um, and it's kind of amazing in terms of the isolation on this one. Really? Um, well, it comes with three different sizes of foam and three different sizes of silicon tips. And then they have these over-the-ear loops, which mostly drive me insane. Yeah. I'm not the biggest fan of over-the-ear loops. I don't like over-the-ear loops. But if you have issues with them falling out, this will pretty much cure them or with, with you know, earbuds falling out. Right. Um, but really, they are not kidding about sound isolation. Um, I am incredibly impressed in how well these block noise. You know, the foam tips, they're kind of a pain because, you know, first you sort of squeeze the foam tip down, then you <laughs> stick it in your ear, then you get the ear loop over. Uh, but they offer an incredible seal. I mean, as in blocking almost all of the background noise. Yes. Sure says up to 37 decibels of isolation. I would believe it. These are as good as the Edemonics I used to use while grinding metal because the these will basically, most ear protection you mm -hmm. see like in a workshop yeah. is not as good as these as blocking, uh, at blocking. like they're like For 21, real? 24 dB, this is 37 dB. These things, oh, wow. if, if you work in a loud environment or you never want to hear your coworkers again, these are a fantastic choice, pretty much anything wow. in the SC series. Um, so Sure is a professional audio company, right? Um, I'm pretty sure these are sure microphones. Yeah, I own a, you I know, so. you know the the SM57 and SM58 are classic rock and roll microphones. I've seen people hammer them on a stage, sing for another hour, drop them. It, they survive anything. Um, these use uh, Shure's MMCX cable. Um, <gasps> Did you just break it? It's replaceable. Oh, okay. <laughs> so if you if you manage to wear out the cable, which would take a lot of work, because yeah. they've done some really clever things, like when you plug the cable in it rotates 360 degrees, so you're not gonna tear apart the cable oh, as you're swiveling awesome. the wires on the mounts on the earbuds. That's this is a really good thing. Brilliant. Yeah, it makes it easier to get these over your ears and also, hey, I can replace the cable. If the cable wears out, how yeah. many people have worn out the cables on a set of earbuds? Raise your hands yeah, now. That's a thing. So you're probably like, enough about the cable, how do they sound? So these are built around a single dynamic micro driver, which looks kind of like this. And as you'd expect from Sure, vocals are spectacular. This part right here is actually the driver, and then it channels it into this little tube that's that so pumps cool. into your ear canal. And that's that connector I was tearing apart, except I wasn't tearing it apart, it was just unsnapping. Um, look, I mentioned before, vocals are spectacular. Sure has defined professional audio mics for decades. You know, in terms of this particular, the SE215, it's not quite neutral. It is bass heavy, mm. leaning towards bass heavy, bass heavy. If you like low end boom, if you like tubas and EDM and open, you know, E strings on the bass, having a bass heavy earbud's probably a plus for you. Highs like the cymbals, they seem a little bit deeper or more recessed in the mix than say uh, one okay. more triple driver, which admittedly is a little bright for some folks. Now, in terms of highs, these don't have the best detail on like cymbals and super high-end stuff. Um, it's not spectacular, but it is definitely solid for the $99 price. Incredibly easy to drive. Your cell phone, you will be able to get these loud enough with your cell phone to permanently damage your hearing if you listen long oh, enough. So don't do that. Don't do that. And uh, <laughs> turn the volume down. And like I mentioned, this, this is a professional audio company designing a personal monitor. Mm -hmm. It has a very professional feel. They've got three sizes of silicone and three sizes of foam tips. There's a little zip up case that comes with them. They are Yay. built really, really well. There's a cleaning tool so you can get the earwax. cleaning tool? Yeah, there's a cleaning My tool. My bows didn't come from with cleaning tools. And your bows cost two, uh, two three times uh -huh. as much. So when we also talk about sort of the professional idea here, there's, you know, and they, they cut, they, they did not include some things to sort of hit their price point. Mm -hmm. There's no microphone. There's no volume or playback controls in the uh, cable. If you're into that kind of thing, yeah. you can actually order a cable with a uh, microphone and uh, uh, right, remote control. Right, because it's replaceable. Exactly, it's 30 bucks. Okay. And then if you want to get really crazy, they have compatible cables, uh, the Bluetooth enabled remote plus mic accessory cable, which is $99. They have a lightning cable, which is $99.99. Um, and before you're like, why would I buy a $100 cable for a $100 set of earbuds? Well, these cables are compatible with a bunch of earbuds that cost up to like $550 or $600. Wow. I'm gonna say $550. So it's, it's the same technology being used in a much more expensive earbud. That's cool. So, good sound, yes. Cool. Great build quality, 
Absolutely. Okay. Amazing job blocking background noise. Seriously, one cool. of the best I've ever heard. Will they replace one more triple driver as my favorite $100 in-ear? No, because really? I want a little bit more cymbal. Mm. I want a little bit less bass. And because in my particular situation, I am constantly having to pull the earbuds in and out. Right. And these. So the over the ear thing would probably bug you, huh? They would drive me a little bit nuts. Yeah. And, okay. and having to sort of like, you know, if I was working for extended periods of time or leaving them on for hours or working in a loud workshop, or if I didn't want to use active noise cancellation, was on planes for hours yeah. at a time, um, these are outstanding. But I feel like I might like them then because I'm a bass head. You would like these a lot. <laughs> you should make sure to try these before they go back to Oh, shirt. I will. So seriously, uh, for my ears, I want something a little bit easier to get in and out, mm -hmm. but very, very high marks for the SE215, especially if you want to block out everything in the office or the workshop. Very cool. By the way, if you're out there going like, how about something that's like 20 bucks, 25 <laughs> bucks, I'm going to send you to the ever so awesome Laura Dragon over at the wire cutter because, well, They've listened to everything. Lauren has more experience listening to headphones than anybody I know. Mm -hmm. Quote, after researching hundreds of earbuds in this price range, seriously considering 244, testing 108, 68 in the last two mm -hmm. rounds, and 40 in this round, well, they have a pick, but I'm going to send you to the wire cutter to find out what it was Ooh. because they worked really, really hard to <laughs> find an amazing $25 in-ear monitor. Yeah, they do some Link amazing the work over there at the wire cutter. So. And they redesigned their website. I noticed. Yeah, that's surprising. It hasn't been redesigned in a while. The best earbuds under $50. I'll tell you now, they cost 25 bucks. What could it be? And they had Which to listen, one? listen to another 48 earbuds for this last roundup. Wow. We do not have those resources. That is nuts. Yes, Lawrence they do. Got great ears. <laughs> we mentioned it last week. We got a new build video up for our Patreon.com patrons. That's patreon.com slash tech thing. Becoming a patron gets your name on our wall of thanks or listed in the show. We even do monthly hangouts with folks in the $10 and up tiers. You get to hang out with Shannon and I for a while online. We got more patron treats coming. And hey, we love your questions. Even if you aren't a patron, email ask at techthing.com. And we've said it before, if you hate email, tweet at techthing, at snubs, or at Patrick Norton, or post on facebook.com slash techthing, or message us. And if you can spare a moment or two to give our video the thumbs up on YouTube, like our Facebook page, or tell a friend about the show, we'd be grateful. And as always, patreon.com slash techthing is your way to help keep the show ad free and get your eyes and ears on special content that only goes out to our patrons. Patreon.com slash techthing. My friend Daniel is in studio right now. Daniel! Hi, Daniel! I've known Daniel <laughs> forever, approximately. I've known Daniel for longer than we were alive before we met each other. I think y'all met around the same time I was born. Yeah, <laughs> give or take. <laughs> it's been a while. A month here, a month there. The uh, But he was saying something like, this sure sounds amazing to him because he commutes in the subway system of New York City, mm, which much yeah. like the BART system here in the East Bay, it gets loud. screeches and yeah. howls and measures fantastically loud on a DB meter if you carry one on the train it because does. you're a freak. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, there are a lot of reasons to have an earbud that seals incredibly tightly. Cool. Just want to say that. All righty, we got a tweet from at J Luigi who says, at Patrick Norton, I can't remember the wire snippers you recommended. Who? <laughs> That's exactly how he tweeted it, too. Who? That's exactly how he tweeted it. <laughs> um, so there's a couple things that come to mind here. One is uh, this, which in theory, do you ever have one of those moments where Amazon won't open a page? Oh, oh yeah. There it is. Almost every pair of pliers I own at this stage of my life is from Channel Lock. Cool. They're made in the US. They are just about impossible to kill. At Channel least Lock. Two or three of them I have uh, came out of garage sales and are probably older than I am, or at least in that neighborhood. Um, but they do some really bomb-proof diagonal cutting pliers, awesome. uh, which you can actually damage by using them or finding out your son has been using them with the help of an extended <gasps> piece of pipe to cut oh, no. uh, steel wire. <laughs> but you know, we live, we learn, we grow, and, and he <laughs> works really hard for his allowance, which bought me a new pair of pliers. Um, <laughs> that aside, uh, the thing, but you were probably looking for this, the Hakko CHP 170 Microsoft wire cutter, 1.5 millimeter standoff, flush cut, 2.5 millimeter hardened carbon steel construction, 21 degree angle jaw, 8 millimeter jaw length, 16 gauge maximum cutting capacity thing. They're amazing. They are amazing. Um, and they're cheap. It's $4.77, no, $4.47. Just about. Earlier today was $4.47, and right now it's still $4.47. Um, but I own a pair of these. You have two pairs of these. I do. 
And those are actually these are other hakos. The little tiny pliers they make. Yeah. Um, but yeah, if you are like sitting down and cutting little tiny wires off of the bottom of a freshly soldered together PCB, or if you're just trying to so keep things perfect. super tight, these are amazing. They're cheap. I had to put my name on them so nobody stole them. From me. <laughs> <laughs> Tools walk sometimes. If you dig around, they also have like a, I think like a, a five pack for 25 bucks. Do they really? In case you, you know, you chew Ooh, them up or cool. have small children around. Always good so. to have those on hand. And the little tiny pliers are the PN-2007. Cool. I think that will help out Jay Luigi. I think it will. And if you have any uh, Twitter questions for us, you can always tweet at TechThing, at Snubs, or at Patrick Norton about tools, audio, um, video game consoles, CPUs. cell phones, CPUs, uh, pretty much anything. Backing we really like technology. <laughs> it's a thing. Tweet at TechThing. Please. We got an email from Lance who writes, I don't want to cause any issues for someone else, so how can we hide someone's Facebook photos from our eyes without stopping people who want to see them? From Lance. Well, it's probably actually impossible to not see somebody's Facebook photos if you follow them. Yes, that's true. Seriously, if you like or follow somebody on Facebook and they and you don't want to see their photos, whether it's it's like, oh my goodness, that's my niece, or oh my goodness, that's my son-in-law, or oh my goodness, I hate that haircut, or oh my goodness, will they quit posting whatever? Um, you don't really have a lot of options. Um, your number one option is don't look. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the number two option is Just unfollow them. Delete Facebook. Yeah, I mean, you know, and it, I mean, literally, Facebook is really about we're gonna mm -hmm. hurl all the crap out yeah. to all the eyeballs. The and then, the unfollow option is great because then that means that anybody's commentary uh, that you currently follow it will show up on in your newsfeed, and then as soon as you unfollow them, you no longer see them in your newsfeed. Which means, unless you go to their profile page, you probably won't see whatever pictures they're posting. Unless they p just posted one on the front of their page, <laughs> and then you True. might get something shocking and horrifying. <laughs> um, you know, it's really it's frustrating, right? But you know, you can like go over a friend's profile, mouse over friends, uncheck show in newsfeed. Right. No, actually, Facebook removed that. <laughs> oh. <laughs> now they call it get notifications. Uh, and you basically oh, okay. have the decision to get either everything they post or stop getting everything they post on their feed. Okay. Um, you might still get those pictures, though, depending on how they post them or move them around. Mm. Something that is worth doing, because sometimes if you don't live on Facebook or live with a Facebook window open on your monitor, um, you can play around with the notification settings inside of Facebook. Uh, and there is a lot to tweak around with on this. For example, if you don't want to receive a sound every time a new notification, look, that's one less chance to see those photos. Play yeah. a sound with a message, that's one last chance to see a photo. Not that people are messaging you photos, but you can kind of go through it. Are you tired of hearing about birthdays? Are you <laughs> do you want on this day, you can go in here, oh, friends activity, do I get it on Facebook and email? How about just on Facebook, if you're not on Facebook? That way you're not getting emailed links to Facebook links that tell you about the stuff you didn't care about even when it was only on Facebook. But go through here and, uh, Take a look at the options in the notification settings in Facebook. That might uh, yeah. help cut down on the opportunities to be profoundly irritated by the photos oh, you yeah. don't uh, want to see. I did do an experiment a little while back where I unfollowed absolutely everybody <laughs> on my Facebook. So I was still friends, but I saw nothing in my newsfeed. Really? Facebook kept on trying to sell me on ads for like the Hack 5 and the tech thing pages that we have on Facebook. Like, you can get this many people to view your page if you buy Pay this money. ad for 50 bucks. And I was <laughs> like, no. But I didn't see anybody's updates. And it was But the, you still, had, it, it, you were still liking them. I was still friends. Them, I was still friends likes, with them. Yeah, I still liked them. I was still friends with them. But the only way I could see what they were doing was by going over to their profile page and seeing it. And by unfollowing everybody in my newsfeed, I know a lot of people will be like, I can't do that. But mm -hmm. if you can separate your friendships from the Facebook company, then you can save yourself so much time every single day. And I mm -hmm. save myself like 30 minutes to an hour every day. And that says a lot about not only my addiction to social networks, but also how much time Facebook takes away from our human interactions. Don't feel bad because some of the smartest people on the planet and three of the largest AI centers known to all humankind operating on three different continents with a mm -hmm. fourth, I believe, about to open are all dedicated to making you behave like me yep. in a liquor store circa 1989. There you go. <laughs> we are open to suggestions here. Email or post on facebook.com slash tech thing. Share the love and help save people's eyeballs and time. Yes. Oh my goodness. From the I had no idea department, 
Uh, we had a wonderful post from Android Authority. You can now check for ebooks at your local libraries on Google Search. Oh, cool. And I was trying to figure out how to do this, so I, I started Google searching. And because I'm reading it right now, I went to Try by Sebastian Junger, a fantastic book that talks about human interactions and, and sort of why Facebook is successful and why being a human is even more successful mm -hmm. than that. Uh, but I was like, oh, the, well, it's, there's no results near me, so Borrow. I'll type in my zip code. I still don't get anything. So I was like, okay. Every library on the planet's got a copy of The Perfect Storm, which is another Sebastian Junger book, because apparently okay. I'm on a Sebastian Junger kick. And look. Oh, that's Borrow cool. the ebook at libraries near you, Alameda County Library, Marinette, San, San Francisco, Francisco Public Library, and you click, and it takes you to the library page. And that's you click awesome. on the right part of the page, and a link shows up, and you actually do something. Oh, that is so neat. Oh, look at that. I can borrow it. That's After really I cool. In. I thought that was kind of fascinating. Yeah, that's awesome. So, as somebody who used to, to spend a lot of time in libraries reading books as a kid and growing up with books, uh, my face stuck in a book pretty much all the time. I love that. That's so great. Libraries are still cool, and taking libraries children to awesome. libraries, even cooler. Oh. But that's not today's analog. Book pick. fairs. <laughs> A book fair is my analog pick. Now, and remember, once in a while, put down your phone, step away from the screen, close your laptop, and do something analog like Mark, who writes, I just wanted to tell you about some analog activities I engaged in with my family this weekend. Ooh. On Saturday, we toured the Maywood Mansion in Rochester, Minnesota, then traveled to the family homestead to pick apples. On Sunday, we picked up over 300 bushels, which are 605 gallon pails Whoa. of black walnuts with our 4-H club. The Walnuts will be sold to the Minnesota Department of Natural Resources, and the proceeds will fund many club activities. Regards from Mark. Oh, that's so cool. That's awesome. Yes, thank you so much, Mark. So Sarah and myself and the boys went apple picking this weekend. We only oh, pulled out about 60 pounds of apples. I'm jealous. 300 man. bushels of walnuts is amazing. That's awesome. Way to go. Yes, thank you so much for writing us, Mark. And if anybody else has an analog pick, you can always tweet those at snubs at techthing at Patrick Norton. You can send them over to us with the hashtag analog, hashtag techthing, or you can email us, which is the easiest way, with a picture, ask at techthing.com. Just send us an email. You, you, you're bored? Send us an email. <laughs> you want to play a video game? Send us an email. Those are the easiest so we can bookmark them. We can use them in future episodes. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Patrick Norton. I'm Shannon Morris. We'll see you next week on Tech Day. Oh no, it failed me. My button failed me. You were in Hawaii I and did now you're throwing the shaka? Yeah. Hey, bros. Hey. Hey. Yeah, I spent time in Hawaii with my sister. It was super fun. We went hiking. We went to a luau. We went snorkeling. We hung out on the beach. Uh, did you find a tiki necklace and end up in a horrible situation like a baby bunch? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> or Phineas uh, I saw Burp. a giant sea urchin while I was snorkeling. It was about, about that big. So maybe it's not giant, but it was bigger than That's my head. It's a pretty big sea urchin. It was big. By my standards. It was real big. Did you see any sea I looked down and I was like, where's my GoPro? How do I, ah, I'm panicking. Because I didn't want to get stung, obviously. So I was just like there with my well, knees up to my chest. <laughs> yeah, it's a pretty <laughs> it's big It's like, day. I can't go down there. Uh, recording. Ooh. <laughs>